Well, thank you for coming on my show. This is really exciting. Before I do it wrong, please tell me, how do I say your first name? It is Ryochi. Ryochi. Yes. That's beautiful. And I'm certain it has a meaning, right? Yes, I'm from Japan and uh, means I'm the first child born in my family. That's super awesome. Uh, my name is Donnie and I was born Easter Sunday at dawn and my mom decided, you know what, dawn would just be too common. Let's name her Donnie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so so i'm i'm very interested in people's names because of that story of mine well that's a nice name thank you um so let's start off you started your acting career you er you earned your acting career from new york's new york university yes i did <laughs> and um but before we get into that detail a little bit what made you get into acting you know, so one thing you're going to learn about me, the longer we talk on, you know, this interview and also mm -hmm. um, on our social media is that I've been teaching acting for over 25 years, mostly to kids and teens. And I totally understand why now that I was drawn to it at such an early age, because um, I feel like I found my people. I was uh, in the show choir in high school and I was a cheerleader and I was senior class vice president and just stuff, but none of that goes with you when you graduate, but what and and you know now like all of those groups of people have a different connotation like oh you're the sporty kid because I earned a letter in track or you're the you're the drama person whatever, but I never took to any of that. I just thought I'm just myself. I'm like this big painting. There's all these colors to me. And ever since um, I was a youth, I was always looking for like my people. And then when I got out of college or when I went to college, I was going to be an accountant because my mom was an accountant. And um, I did remember I was bit by the acting bug literally in fifth grade because I mm -hmm. got to go to remember um do you, are you old enough to know gifted and talented education it used to be called the gate program no um, yeah so I tested to be you know one of the gifted kids whatever that means right mm -hmm. um now I you know I'm glad that the calculator does math for me but um so I got to be in a little play in the fifth grade and so here I am going to university. Um, I went to UCLA as a freshman. I followed my brother there. I kept falling asleep in my um, accounting classes. Like, well, this is no good. This was going to be my major. And then my final semester, I took my very first acting class ever, which I, I, I credit that to changing my life because I walk in. My brother, who's a year and a half, a year and a month older than me, was in the same class. We didn't even know it. And I got an A in that class. Before that, I was what is called um, on the holdover list, the dean's holdover mm -hmm. list, because because <laughs> hanging out at UCLA was more important to me than studying. But when that bug hit me, I was like, "You can major in this." And the things I got an A back then in were acting, sociology, and psychology. Mm -hmm. And that's really how I dive into characters and. I believe that's why I'm such a good teacher of youth is because I get that you're still finding yourself and you just might find a home in the theater or right. the television or the thespians, the creatives, a very welcoming, loving group. And I believe that that's what drew me in. Well, that's amazing. Um, so great background uh, story how you got into <laughs> acting. Now, um, in 2005, um, I watched the ER, but you were in ER on season yeah. 11, episode 18. You paid, you played Marta, Marta. Um, and then, um, before we go into that, in 2003, you played, you were in Law and Order, season, uh, season two, episode 14, you played Sophia. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then 2000, another 2003, you were third watch, uh, season four, episode 12. And then, of course, in 2005, you were into the fire. That was a, you played a news reporter. And mm -hmm. then, uh, what about Brian in 2006? You played Mar Maria. And then, of course, ER, like I mentioned, season 11, episode 100, I believe 118, I'm correct. But, um, so let's talk about 
being on those TV shows, um, we can go with um, 2003 with Law and Order. Um, how was it being on set? So Law and Order Criminal Intent was early on in my career and it was thrilling and also very, uh, I don't know, I just found like, this is my home. I belong here. This is cool. And uh, I had to talk with an accent because, you know, I look like this. So quite often I'm asked, can you do that with a Spanish accent? So I sort of learned my Spanish accent over time because um, I didn't grow up speaking Spanish in the home, although my great my grandma spoke it and my mm -hmm. great grandma. But <laughs> so something really cool. I, I have a scene with Vincent D'Onofrio in that. And here I am talking, you know, with this accent and in between takes, we're just I stayed in character and I'm like making the bed as the maid and he's like trying to get me to drop character and joke with him and I like I said oh I, I'm not going to break character you you regular I just here for the day and he was like whoa <laughs> but I remembered just how gracious he was and how I really felt like ah okay these are still my people they're just my people on tv because I had a really um, a regional theater career that led to that out of graduate school and I would pack up my suitcase and go do a play for three months and live over there and live over there and then come back and so law and order criminal intent was one of my first um, episodes on TV and I really it was like an aha light bulb moment to realize ah television people are my people too oh thank goodness <laughs> Amazing. And then, of course, you, you like you said, you play Mart, Marta. And mm. what was your role in that role, in that um, Law and Order? Oh, so uh, so oh, Marta I'm was no, the... I'm sorry. That was uh, ER. I'm sorry. Law and Order. Yeah, Marta was Sophia. ER? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Sophia was Law and Order Criminal Intent. I can imagine the man saying my name um, because he entered the room and said Sophia. Um, on ER, I gave birth in the back of a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm crying and like screaming. I didn't even have any like actual lines, but it was it's to date one of my favorite TV gigs because, um, you know, and I got to tell you, uh, just being ourselves right now in this industry is mm -hmm. amazing that uh, people like me are represented. Plus size women are represented. Women are more represented. Mm -hmm. I was really lucky to keep getting cast as these Latinas, even though that wasn't my first dialect or language. And um, it, I was a little plus size right then. And so what do you do? You make her the pregnant one. <laughs> I don't care. Hire me. I don't care what you, I'm fine. Yes, I'm the pregnant one. And so I gave birth in the back of a taxi screaming and like, it was really fun to have to just cry take after take. Mm -hmm. It's something very cathartic about it. You know, ER has been going on for a very, very long time. And yeah. then unfortunately, the season ended, no more ER, you know. And and how did you handle knowing ER was not coming on TV anymore? You know, all these beautiful characters mm -hmm. that people create, they live on forever in re reruns. Mm -hmm. So I just go with the flow. And I do have some favorite shows that... I was like, oh man, don't go. Um, that that lives such a long life. I was like, okay. At the actor part of me was more interested than the um, the fan part of me. I was like, what are all those actors gonna do for work now? <laughs> you know? So I think, oh no, you had a solid paycheck for all those years. I hope you saved some of it. Right, right. Um, you know, let's talk about this subject and it's kind of intense kind of not what do you believe that is the most challenging about being in this entertainment industry you have auditions you have uh, tapes you have zoom calls you have mm -hmm. you know getting in your car and going audition and this is mainly as a mother's view and speaking out to young uh, actors and actors out there right now because you have a lot of them who are young, who mm -hmm. are going to auditions, who are trying to figure out why I didn't get this role. Is there something yeah. wrong with me? Or you have older people, and no offense, like your age, or maybe a little mm -hmm. older, maybe middle age, who are thinking, 
is this not for me? Why is my hair not looking good? Is it something with my eyes? And I think it's affecting more with teenagers and young kids. Yeah. So what What is your, I know it's not a competition, but you have to work hard. But for you, um, you can speak as a mother because you said you were a mother. And what yeah. what can you give advice for young actors and actresses who are who are watching this interview who says, you know, I want to be in these roles that you played and what what what's your advice for encouraging them to continue audition honey i have so much to say on this subject <laughs> in fact y'all come over to donnie mercado on youtube it's all about acting by donnie mercado and i tend to do an awful lot of mindset and mantra and positive thinking and just stay out there i'm with you kind of things because and it's not just it's not a lie i believe this so there are certain things I believe that you can hold on to at any age. One, where you are right now in your career is where you're supposed to be. You might not like it, but maybe there's a threshold that you have to break through in the believability, believability of your characters. Maybe it's because you don't know this, but you're about to walk down the street at Starbucks tomorrow and meet the love of your life. And if you go off and do a TV show right now, you're not going to marry that person and have that mm -hmm. child and that soul needs to exist like there's so many things all you can do is continue to study your craft because you love it don't worry about did i get the job did i not get the job i truly believe that if you stay ready and you're in it because you love creating the characters and getting better at it the only person you're racing against is yourself and just stay in it don't go hiding. One of the major mistakes I've done made in my life is I have hidden when I didn't like that. I'm a not, not enough syndrome hits you at any point in your mm -hmm. life. Ah, forget it. Don't even worry about that. You are enough. I'm here to tell you, you are enough right this second. People need real people like you on television. Now, is it your turn today? That I can't guarantee. It's not about whether you did the part correctly there's so much out of your control maybe it's that they need somebody taller am i going to become taller no i'm me tomorrow they're going to need somebody who looks like me and i'm darn well going to be ready when they do so at, in your 20s continue to focus on your craft have a backup plan of some sort that you also love that pays the bills something that doesn't suck your soul mm -hmm. because it's no fun to be a broke actor because you want your headshots and your resume go and build a youtube channel like you're doing like i'm doing get that thing monetized and then you know you're going to be on camera as an actor anyway there's people out there that aren't even creatives who are making so much money doing that we were born for that so have that in your back pocket study hard be in it for the long haul if you are um, under 18, make sure your parents are uh, sort of momagering or, you know, whoever the dad is or the grandparent or whoever is um, watching over you. Find a group of people you know, like, and trust. I'm in the Hollywood winner circle, Wendy Elaine Wright. I know, like, and trust her. Um, she watches over the, the careers of fledgling actors who are just starting. Find a mentor that you trust, run things past them. Never just go by yourself to some strange audition you found on backstage. Uh -uh, I don't trust strangers like that. Take your parent, make sure they're on your Instagram, your Facebook, all of that. I say that as a mom, very much so. Mm -hmm. And then at my age, somebody breaking in, <laughs> most people our age have given up by now. <laughs> So just keep going because you love it. If it's still in your soul, there's something that you haven't finished with it yet. You're, you're going to try to let it go, maybe, but it's going to keep coming back because once it was part of you, it's still part of you. Mm -hmm. So I you hope know, that answers your question. No, it, it does. And I, and, and I believe it, it will also answer a lot of people's question as well. You know, the one thing I noticed about the entertainment industry is people think it's a competition mm -hmm. it's not and and you can you can correct me um it's it's we're not competing with each other we're all supporting each other in this entertainment industry and i think a lot of people feel like that if their friends are auditioning and they're like oh why didn't my friend get this role and i didn't and and and, and they and people i think a lot of younger younger kids i say kids but younger actors feel like 
this is a competition because of this and this looks, but you, you gave a good, it's a good response because it's not mm -hmm. a good, it's not a competition. It's about it may not been your moment, but you, you know, you never know because when you audition for that role, that director could be thinking, you know, I'm going to have her next time. I'm going to have him next time. And you may yep. get contacted next time for a future role that director is doing. So um, that's, I, I totally agree with you. Thank you for giving your wisdom. Um, and that's happened to me before. I've been called in for a role and given a different role. It happened to me in theater a few times. Um, I can't say that it actually happened in any of the TV gigs that I booked, but it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So my next question for you, since you mentioned theater, is do you like theater or do you like being in front of a camera and acting? It's a different life. Uh, I was never paid as highly as a theater actor as I was for one day as a guest spot on television. So that's a consideration. Mm -hmm. um, it takes longer to do a theater run than it does to do a guest spot on television. And as a mom, I'm like, huh, do I have, you know, uh, time to do um, a full rehearsal period, a dress rehearsal tech and a full run. And I have, she's going to be nine uh, in like, what, 10 days. Um, can I do that every night? Oh, your daughter's uh, going to turn nine? Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Nine. Thank you. I know. I can't believe it. Um, so I loved, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I loved living out of a suitcase, getting up. I was equity um, early on. That was very, uh, a big blessing because they had to give me my own apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here I was a struggling actor in New York. So I'd, I'd leave my lease if I could. And then I'd be living rent free for the time that I was doing the gig. Um, I think that if I were to um, if I were to translate that to television, my dream would be to like you know be in front of a live audience every Friday, and it happens right. to be on TV. But you still get to go home to your family at night. So it depends. I love doing things in sequential order for theater, where you get to walk in fresh. You don't know the end of the play. You've psyched yourself <laughs> out and, but you really do. And then you just live it with the audience and then you do it again the next day. Right. Right. Something very exciting about that. It took a while for me to get used to the fact that they don't um, necessarily shoot your role on television in sequential order. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Um, since you're a mother and I'm pretty sure uh, I could be not pretty sure, but I know most mothers is that and this is for you as well, but and you could be answering other mothers' question is, mm -hmm. do you do you want your child to be in the entertainment industry? That's one question. Mm -hmm. Or do you, since she's you said she's turning nine years old, and there's a lot of actors and A-list actors and who are not A-list actors who start really young as well, and you see them on TV. Mm -hmm. Do you do you want to have your your daughter decide on her own? it's kind of the same that's one or two question or do you just you're just kind of hoping maybe she'll kind of go that direction what's your view on that as well so um right now i run an acting studio for kids and teens in where i live it's called tada acting studio mm -hmm. my daughter thinks of those kids as her cousin because before school started, she would be with me and we'd be doing improv games or on camera and she'd go and she'd like photobomb them and video bomb them. I'm like, ah, <laughs> all right, act with the kid. So she's not at all shy when it comes to that. She's over there playing with her Beanie Boos, pretending that it's her own little show and she talks to them and creates things. So I, ver I do know the value of um, improv and acting for socialization skills. And I see my students, mo I live in a charter school town. So most of my students come to me for enrichment purposes. They have no intention of becoming professional actors. Mm -hmm. A couple of them, I've gotten them agents and one of them just got into American Academy, Academy of Dramatic Arts. But um, for the most part, I see how it changes you as a person. You could be the most well-spoken lawyer ever you could go into the corporate environment and it doesn't matter who your boss is and maybe it's a nice person, maybe not. I've had a couple not, won't phase <laughs> you. You'd be like, yeah, 
because it, it grounds you in a way that I mm -hmm. think no other training does, just like a sport, learning to be a team player. So in answer to your question, we have a saying in my house, I tell my daughter, honey, what can you be when you grow up? And she says, anything I want to be. I'm like, that's right, Miha, you can be. And if anybody tells you that you can't, what do you say? And she says, my mommy says you're a liar. That's right. <laughs> so she gets to choose. I haven't even right. pierced her ears. She gets to choose. Mm -hmm. You know, she does have her own YouTube channel. It's called Yips and Rosette's World. If you have kids, send them there. <laughs> but I monitor it. I'm really doing it with her. Well, it's you know, more the like reason... an outlet. Pardon me. The reason I was mm -hmm. asking, because I know a lot of parents who are actors out there, and mm -hmm. I could be wrong, or they're not, I don't, I don't want to word it this, this, this way, but they're probably concerned. They don't know how their kids is going to handle, and this goes back to what I was trying to say, auditions mm -hmm. and going, you know, in, and maybe you can answer this question as well. You know, you, you may, since your daughter's not even going to be nine years old, but you know, <laughs> kids going to school and then they're like oh homework and auditions and you know you're acting and then going back to homework and auditions mm -hmm. and I know some um young actors I had on my show they stopped and they do homeschool only because they do so much acting and so much getting out of school early because they mm -hmm. know they, they want to get the role and so for you um this is another question is for you do you do you believe that um, it's difficult for kids to um, go to school and do acting? Do you, what, what's your recommendation, if you mind me asking? I think it's near impossible to have a professional acting career and remain in public school. Mm -hmm. It is not at all impossible to be homeschooled and have a professional acting career. And the kids in the town where I live now, they're homeschooled by choice for completely different reasons. My daughter is begging to be homeschooled. <laughs> and there are, there are um, she's in public school right now, but there are hybrid um, homeschool charters where you go three days a week in person and two days um, at home, or maybe you get out at two every day, or maybe it's 100% homeschool. And then they have um, a set teacher who helps you stay on top of your grades. I think it's a glorious option because then you don't have to choose one or the other. Right, and maybe you right. decide, mommy, I'm going to take this year off because I'm going to be on the football team instead. And I need to be in the public school to do that. Great. Do it. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your career is going to be there your entire life. Especially if you start at this age, you're going to be cast as you. I just made a video about this on my channel. You're going to be cast as you on a good day when you're young or a bad day, depending on the character. <laughs> And then if you leave and come back 10 years later, your demographic is going to change. You're no longer the youth. Maybe you're the teen Then you're the mom. Then you're the grandma. No matter what age you do it, they're going to need somebody like you in that story. So don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Uh, if you ask my husband, he'd say, no way. She's not going into the business. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm like, she can do whatever she wants. Right. But I mean, how could she not be around it? Her mommy teaches acting in the town we live in. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now for you, is where do you see yourself in 10 years or five years? That's really a great question. And I actually watched one of your... I. Um, in preparation for today, I YouTubed you and I, I knew that question was going to come and I heard somebody say it and I'm like, ah, where do I see myself? Okay, so I, I'm, I'm reinvestigating things like manifestation and I believe in, like I already said, you know, you are where you're meant to be. In 10 years, my house will be fully paid off. I'm going to have a hundred thousand dollars that I don't need right now someplace. I'm going to have stashed money for my daughter's college education. I'm going to have a fully monetized YouTube channel. A couple, I will have by then done a few national commercials. I'll still be teaching in some capacity because it's in my soul. I love, I live by a share my tools mantra. You know, that's what I do. Um, I would be recurring on a show that doesn't need me every day but recurring on a show <laughs> but it does need me every day because mommy likes her own free time right so i this is i'm working towards all of these things right now well you know i do appreciate you watching my shows I um know. thank you thank you so I much i also went on your imdb page i was like oh, your show is on there you need to teach me how to do that <laughs> 
you know, I, I really do appreciate the support. Um, you know, I, I love what I'm doing um, because, you know, I love um, interviewing actors and mm -hmm. actresses from any age group, you know, from, you know, six years old all the way to adult, you know, and mm -hmm. it's inspiring to hear stories of any those age groups, why they want to go in acting and and, you know, some of them, you hear them because like you, for example, is a mother. Oh, my, my parents are doing it. Or I saw, I saw something on TV. I wanted to do it. And mm -hmm. it's meaningful and it's powerful that you're, you know, that people want to get into this entertainment industry, you know, and um, it, it's the support I'm giving them. I'm it's a support I'm giving them, but I'm giving them the platform to introduce yeah. themselves and talk about themselves and, their goal is to, you know, move up into the industry, in entertainment industry, you know, and it's so inspiring that, you know, if we didn't have entertainment industry, you know, nobody would tell stories of what's happening, right, and, or true stories, or, you know, in, in, you know, you don't have Grey's Anatomy, you don't have Chicago PD, you don't have any of these stuff that's been going on. Mm -hmm. And we don't mm -hmm. tell stories. So and so we make movies and we tell stories and we impact people around the world um, about. And hopefully some movies and some TV shows also changes people's mind, people's views yeah. about things. Right. And that's why I think it's not a thing where they're open. We, are, we want them to open their mind and be more acceptance of what what could this could could happen to your family or this could mm -hmm. be your neighbor did you watch the oscars i'm yes, thinking I right now yeah i'm thinking right now of robert downey jr and if you hear um something that's my german shepherd drinking water over there <laughs> <laughs> i have a chihuahua asleep over there she's featured on my channel as my little jpeg and my german shepherd whenever i record she decides i'm thirsty mommy um that's so why i heard what, some water noise but i wasn't sure that was her tiny bear but you she know, was saved I, off of a highway. The Oscar award. We, oh, there's your German Shepherd. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, but I, so um, Robert Downey Jr. That this, which I don't want to forget to say this. One of the uh, my favorite parts of his acceptance speech was when he stopped and said, "You know, the stories we create, the the things we decide to make, they are important. These are important." And I'm I'm moved by that. And also when Emma Stone said, "It's about us." coming together as a group of people and creating something that is more than the sum of its parts. Just oh, love it. You know, I believe this. I, I watched the Oscars. It was powerful. Um, you know, you have the movie up to neither. I've seen it wrong, but it, the movie was great. Um, all three of them, first time Oscar awards. Um, they made a movie really good, very powerful about the story mm -hmm. about the atomic bombs and and you know the, it's the story about the history about oh we made a mistake making it and what did we do and and it was it's it's you know 82 point something and then um doom made 82 point something they were really close to each other right and it's just mm -hmm. but it was just powerful how all three of them got the oscar awards and they all said it the same you know that their speech was powerful and you know, emma stone's speech was amazing and you know and that's why i i look up to those people because anything can happen you just keep pushing yourself keep doing what you want to do and keep that passion and you never know right and you, you mm -hmm. look at robert <laughs> he was in the Marvel movies, he's been Avengers movie, you know, he's been in a lot of movies and, you know, and it's like everybody's, when everybody heard announcer, this is his first Oscar, everybody's like, wait, what? Wait, yeah, wait, I wait, know. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, really? What? I so, would have thought you had 10 of those by you now. You know, and, and that brings up, the, like I was saying, it, it brings up to a point where it comes to a role that you get that impacts people. And, and, and Davine Joy Randolph. She mentioned Ron Van Lu, and that was her teacher at Yale. One thing I went and I IMDb'd them to figure out what they were talking about. Ron Van Lu was my teacher at NYU before he w left NYU and went to Yale. 
And the story she told, he impacted my life in, the, in a very similar way, how she said she, she went in and said, I don't see myself. He gave her that pep talk. I once marched into his office and was like, Ron, I don't know if I'm meant to be here, if it's too hard. Or, and he said to me, Donnie, if you don't finish the program, you'll never know. Wow. How like, whoa, one step removed, you know, what I mm -hmm. felt as I was listening to her. So back to the question you asked me before, you're not racing against anything except your own love of this. Just keep doing it because you love it. Right. And you never know. That might be you up there. They all came from different backgrounds. One went to university. One was privately coached. Another one started in theater. Look up their IMDb pages and see, and it'll give you um, inspiration. There's no one right. way to get there. Well, you know what's interesting about, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of them, um, some of them did not go to college. And, no. and, and, and it's so, you know, you look at, um, for example, Tom Cruise, who never go to college, and you look at some other actors out there that never went to college. So you know, you don't need to go to college for acting. Just just keep practicing, keep doing what you want to do, and you never know you will get, you know, your role. And it's yes, just... or you can if that's the road you take. I would have never been able to afford to do all the things I did if it wasn't for student loans back then. Right. So it depends on. And I always knew I also wanted to teach. So the MFA was important to me because of that reason. So, but do you need one? No, you could go study with my coach tomorrow. You could study with me. You could, you know, just follow your path. 100%, 100%. You know, um, like I said, back to what you were saying, I, I do appreciate you, um, like I said, watching my show mm -hmm. um, because I I love keep hearing people say that because, you know, I I'm it's not about me. And it's really not. It's about giving you and all the actors out there platforms, directors, producers, music, and you know, and to give them platforms to tell people their stories, why they're doing this, why they want to make this. I film, love this. I and, love and it. <laughs> why they want to get involved. So that's what my show is about, you know, to let people tell their stories. And, and and that was going to be my question to you, but you already told me. You, well, you could like, ask me more. He, <laughs> why did he start this in the first? Well, I have you a know, question why for you. Why did I start this? Yeah, yeah. Tell me that, and then <laughs> I have a question. I've been dying to ask you. <laughs> so, this is my fifth season. Um, you know, I mm -hmm. grew up watching the Oprah Winfrey show. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember her last half of the show, and I said, "Wow, a talk show. I like this." And then, um, and then um, I was really more into Ellen DeGeneres. Mm -hmm. She's the one who really, really inspired me. And, you know, I, um, she inspired me. I was going through mood changes. I was suffering depression. I'm not afraid to open mm -hmm. up about it. And, you know, and the, you, you lose three friends to suicide. Mm -hmm. um, I lost three friends to suicide. And, oh. um, I'm sorry. So, um, my mind, I didn't know what was happening, what, what's mm -hmm. going on. And I was watching Ellen and I said, you know, I, I really want to impact people's lives, you know? So I was watching Ellen and <laughs> I never missed her show. I watched every day and I said, you know, I want to be like Ellen. I want to have my own talk show. So I started and then, you know, four years ago. So, uh, I mean, I've been doing my show ever since then. I, I you know, I was nervous. I never was into acting. Mm -hmm. um, can I act? Sure. But I'm more <laughs> an actor. I'm not an actor. I'm more a talk show host. And I'm, I'm, I'm so glued into talk shows. You know, I love interviewing actors and actresses and directors and film producers and letting them tell their stories because, and, and others, mental health issues we want to mm -hmm. talk about and, 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 or anxiety problems because mental illness is serious. And I want to tell people about that too. But I think, no, I think it's very also important for us to tell stories, true stories about why people want to do this and talk about their films. And that's on YouTube or on Netflix or, you know, Amazon Prime or stuff like that. Have people talk about what's happening, what encouraged them, you know, what what made them be where they are, 
mm-hmm. and what's what's keeping them going, especially for teenagers and kids. Because I always ask, sometimes I ask them, what's keeping you going? Why you want to do this? You know, you why do you, you, you where do you see yourself in five years? And you, know, you have people, teenagers and, and, and young uh, high school kids or who are college kids, they tell stories and say, this is why I want to do this. This is where I see myself in five years. And it's amazing, you know, you have people tell stories about what is going on in their life, right? You have one that's, they want to make a film. Um, you know, I know a film director in Los Angeles. His name is Josh Shamir. He is mm-hmm. making film about immigration, mm-hmm. you know, and he he's making films about true stories about, you know, he made a film about, you know, in Los Angeles, people, you know, family coming off a boat, you know, act liking they were coming across from another country because, of, you know, all this stuff we see on TV. And he's making stories about, you know, true stories about um, him as a director, about father being taken away by police because he's being deported, you know, and having police sirens come. You know, he's making stories, impacting stories because he wants to let people know these are people's stories. These are people's mm-hmm. real family. And, you know, and, and he he's not making he's not trying to make it political, but he wants to make people know that yeah. don't judge people. Please understand. Let's let's all love one another, and that's what my show's about. I want to let people know that we dear. I want to I want them to talk about their films, about their stories, why they mm-hmm. want to make this film, you know. And the one that really got me when he made a, dep- a depression film, and it made me cry. I like I was bawling. And Joe Shamir did a great job on that, you know. And and it's as we us as human beings, um, and I get deep into this. Sorry, but that's I, okay. We we need to make more suicide prevention films. We absolutely need, we need to, and that's the reason why that I'm not afraid to talk about my depression. You know, I lost three friends to suicide Mm. and it doesn't matter what age we all need to talk about this to teenagers and young kids to all the way to adult that there is help. You can talk to friends and, you you know, Mm -hmm. maybe when you're too young, no, but you can talk to your family. But when you're a teenager, you can talk to your family and your friends and and reach out for help. You know, don't be alone. But, you know, when we're making films and we're talking about this, it's that is what when people watch my show like you are and other people Mm -hmm. who are mentioning this, that is what helps me because I know I'm impacting. Hopefully I'm impacting people's lives because they're watching it and they're like, oh, there is help. There is somebody who's going through depression. Mm -hmm. And that's me because I'm not afraid Mm -hmm. to talk about it. I Mm -hmm. used to be afraid to talk about it. I used to be, oh, wait. I'm starting a show and should I not talk about my mental yeah. health, right? Should I be silent? Should I mm-hmm. not mention about what is going on in my system? No, it's very brave of you to bring yeah, that up so, because people are going to connect with that and they're going to mm-hmm, realize. And that's and why it... I started, <laughs> not because of that, you know, but mm-hmm. because I wanted to interview actors, but it took me until maybe my third season and i could be wrong but my third season i start opening up because people yeah. were going through depression and i said you know what i'm changing my show up a little bit we I, we need to talk about it and that's good that's how i am <laughs> yeah no i'm i'm all like i don't think i was like this in my 20s but now i'm just like yeah let's talk about the real things we talk we call things what they're really called with my daughter she knows things that you know we didn't talk about when i was her age because stranger danger is real just things <clears throat> but um the reason why i got so involved in my youtube channel i was trying to um monetize a completely different channel and I logged on to this one that was just for acting and I had created an original scene based on my real life I struggled with infertility Mm -hmm. I left I left my acting career to try for so long like 15 years of trying to have my child and she needed to exist and um I log on I see this and it's got what this one video based on my life had 55,000 views like whoo but 
there's something to that because if we create stories based on our own lives that someone else connects with that they draw inspiration from or maybe just help them you know phone a friend that day uh it's totally worth it It, that's the reason to do it in the first place and we're all online now like i have so many friends in these different acting groups that i've never met in person because um you know maybe once a year i go to a conference and i can see some of them but we're only like a click away now there you go. Hi, I feel like I know you because I've seen your things on YouTube and I went on Instagram and we've chatted and liked each other's posts. I'm like, oh, oh, so that was my question to you. How did we first meet on social media? How did we um, first, like, how'd you find me? I don't know. You know, I feel like I've known you a while, but I don't remember what the first comment so, was. Um, you, you found me first, I believe. And, okay. um, and then I was following you and then we we've been following each other for a while yeah. and so I was meaning to send you a message I think I sent you a message the first time um about and then I got crazy mom brain and we didn't right. connect it was back not then. last year it was I believe it was last year yeah mm-hmm. anyways I was messaging you and I said okay we'll get to get in touch yeah. and I was like oh let me let me interview you and so I was like, let me have you on my show. And Thank you so much for inviting me you're because very I feel like you're an old friend now. And now I remember, I think I followed you because a filmmaker I follow was following you. I'm like, oh, well, he must be somebody if this person's <laughs> following him. There we go. And and yes. And so I was, I saw you and I reached out. And then, of course, I understand mom thing. you. We were messaging back and forth and um, <laughs> communicating times and you were sending your that daughter had... bedtime thing. It kills me, you know? <laughs> yeah. The, your daughter had this and you had, that's okay. And, and so, but you know, it's been, it, it's just, like I said, um, I love your smile and I, I really Aww, do appreciate you. you coming on my show because, you know, that people know about you, about your story and what encouraged you and what is, you know, you're doing, you're, you're teaching, acting, you're, you know, you have a YouTube channel, you're, and and that goes back to what I was saying. We are impacting people's lives and we're encouraging people yes. to do what they want to do, right? Don't give up and keep going. If I can leave you with anything, just be you because you are perfect just the way you are. Just keep investigating the craft because you love it, not because you're chasing some golden shiny star. And I mentioned money early. I want to clarify something. I don't want just that. I want to be a millionaire who gives most of it away and mm-hmm. funds your movie and that movie and that movie and that movie because why not make more to give more right <laughs> that's why i want it and for my child of course to make her future secure but no i totally understand i, I sorry <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to cut you up no i totally totally understand you know and it's it's always um an honor to have you on my show and you are always always welcome back on my show i Aww, can't thank wait you. to have you back thank you so much i'll have to have you on mine someday yes do you have a pet yes. do, you have a, do you have a pet um i used to and then it passed away oh i'm so sorry yeah um well i have this vision of interviewing my friends and their pets <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> because i'm such a dog mom i love dogs <laughs> yes so um, but yeah, my I had a cat and then it passed away because that tumor in the mouth. Yeah, and, and pets so. are our family. Seriously, I'm not even lying. And you know, I I just didn't want to put it to sleep. The doc, mm-hmm. the vet said, "Do you want to put it to sleep?" And I said, um, "No." So um, I kept it in the house, Aww. and I just I just kept you know feeding. It. And then suddenly, um, he didn't want to move so much. He was slowly walking. And then that one day he um he died in the arms in the arms. So it was it was very it took me I was like a shock. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Um but and then it's like wow, um you lived a long life. But And what know. a gift that you were holding your loved one when they passed. I have been holding three different pets as they passed away at home with me right there with them so that is a blessing that you and had I, each other i will say this and i think that no i don't want to say i think it's the best um because 
You know, you, your animal wants to be where they feel comfortable and their last resting place. And I don't believe, and, and this is just my opinion, everybody. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I don't believe putting an animal to sleep. Um, unless I know they're really in pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if I know they're gonna, they're not in pain, but they're going to die. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, I just, I, I can't. So I just take them home and I just monitor, you know? Yeah. And, and um, and I know we're never going to know the truth until someday we've passed on to wherever some places. I don't really talk religion or politics, but I do believe that those little souls are watching <laughs> over us. I just believe that. No, I totally agree with you, too. I, you know, <laughs> I, um, on my side, I don't really talk political or um, yeah. religion, but, you know, I like I said, I talk a lot about films and everything. But yes, yeah. 100%, I totally agree with you, you know, and um I love animals, so. But you're Yay. always, always welcome back on my show, and I thank I you. What a joy! What a pleasure to finally meet you. Yes, I don't mean, forget you know. to um, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm already subscribed. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's mine down there, Johnny Mercado. Yes, I see it. I was subscribed too, but I would love to have you back, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Yeah, and you know what I figured out is that um, when you post this on your channel. I can feature it on mine, even though it lives on yours. Whenever it's ready, tell me because I'm going to feature it on mine. On your, on your, uh, YouTube on my channel. channel. Yeah. Uh, yes. Did you know that you can link somebody else's video and be like, Hey, this is leads to them, but wow. so we'll be featured that. on my channel. <laughs> wow. And before I know that I'm, it's okay for me to say, if you know any more actors and actresses, please send them my way. I absolutely do. I know a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I love to, um, have, you know, Every, anybody on my show and like i said just to talk about what is what inspired them you know mm -hmm. and, and because i i say this is we all need to be kind to each other but yes. also is what inspired them what encouraged them to do this and again to let people know this is not a competition nope. that is my big motto you're running your own race yes ma'am <laughs> thank you and i'd love to <laughs> have you, you back Okay, I'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.